Hey, a cock 45. Yes, we're over here on the Chapter 2 rifle range. Got a pretty nice little piece of wood and steel here. The number 5 Mark 1 infield. Jungle carbine. Is that pretty? We got beautiful light here. Let's take a look. Look at the cartouche and the markings. You can see everything. The serial number up there on the stock matches the uh, the firearm. And uh, there's the crown and uh, the markings there, proof markings and everything. This thing, I think it was never issued, okay? You know, I think in the first video we did with this, I wasn't sure, but I, you know, that stock and everything is just like new. I think this gun has just been in a Cosmoline since December of 46. <laughs> I remember that Christmas. I was, uh, I think I was 45 that year, but uh, 1246, born on date. It's been around a while, but it's almost like a new firearm. I mean, it feels like a new firearm. When you work the bolt, it, you know, it, it's not broken in, okay? So it is a cool gun, and we're going to just take some shots over there. Now, I think the sights are right on uh, pretty much, but uh, it's not really uh, as easy to hold steady and on target, I've noticed, as the larger infield with the long barrel. So that's my first uh, excuse. Oh, let's see if we can hit something. All right. I've got a pocket full of shells, PPU, ammunition. When we run out of them, we'll just have to quit. And uh, whoever's down over there is down, and whoever's not will survive for another day. Let's try the plate first. Got one hit anyway. Okay, let's just start with those little guys on the left over there and dig up some dirt around them. I'm gonna really focus. It's hard for me. I'll get a better uh, footing here. Okay, it's so light in the front, it wants to move off target if I don't watch it. And then got to coordinate that trigger break. Ugh. Try him again. Brought it up a little bit. Popped him. Okay. Let's try that next one up there behind it. Ooh, to the right. I knew it when I pulled the trigger. This is a neat little gun. I mean, that's almost too much of a challenge for me, but this would be a great little deer rifle. I mean, it goes right where the sight is pointed when you pull the trigger. I mean, it's not a competition trigger or anything. You know, it's a military trigger. It's not horrible. Okay. And I like this thing. All right. Ooh, so close. So close. Ooh. Sound like I hit it. Just didn't knock it down, maybe. Rest my arm. That's a pretty piece of hardware, I'll tell you. Hopefully you've seen the first video with this where I go in depth on the pit on the rifle and how they hollowed out the knob there and everything to make it lighter. And all that's good. But I think a heavier one is actually easier to shoot well. <laughs> but this would be uh, more convenient to carry. And it would shoot well enough. All right. <clears throat> All right, got him. 
I really feel like I could lie down and hit them every time because I know the sights just a matter of just having to go on target when you pull the trigger. Uh, <laughs> brilliant deduction, huh? That's always the, the issue. <laughs> Like I say, this is some uh, is some uh, PPU ammo found online. 303 is out there. It's a nice cartridge. It uh, doesn't kick quite as much as a 30 out six. Reminds me a little bit of a Krag. I guess it's probably a little stouter than the Krag round. Okay. It's a it's an interesting round. Well, it's been around forever. Really historical. And one thing you gotta, you know, watch. You want uh, the rim of the cartridge just slightly ahead of the previous cartridge. Then you don't have any feeding problems. Learned that from one of you all pointing that out to me. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. All right, boy, what a challenge! But it's fun to accept that challenge with a nice rifle. Okay. I'm going to try for that lower little one to see if we can scare him. Whew. All right. <laughs> Whew. What I have to discipline myself uh, on here is taking my time. And you know, when you're in a video, like I possibly am right now, uh, you know, you're, you're, you want to just keep shooting and you know, keep things going. And you just can't do that when uh, you're taxing your skills, you know, whatever those might be. To the limit, for me at least. So I have to take my time. I'm sorry if you have to be somewhere. I try to shoot fast, but uh, if I shoot fast, I miss. I, I miss anyway. Felt pretty good, but not good enough. I did spin him around. <laughs> now he looks smaller. I don't know if I get that. I'm going to go to the one up behind him. I must have knocked him uh, crooked in. I'd like to shoot the big tall one because that's my favorite target but I'll take a couple of shots at the one on the left first Darn, I think I knocked that one sideways too. Let me rest my arm a minute and put a couple more rounds in. I sure did. <laughs> That's just what I need to do, make the targets uh, uh, smaller, because it's not a big enough challenge, right? I, you know, that has never happened in all of the uh, <laughs> shooting we've done over here. Those big old targets just tend not to spin at all or move like that. I really like the 303. I think it would make a good military cartridge uh, someday for somebody, you think? Like for about a hundred years. I was really glad to find this rifle. I, I've always liked the, the little jungle carbine. Again, that was more of a uh, term that the uh, soldiers used. They just kind of picked up and called it. It was never designated as the jungle carbine or anything, but uh, it was used in the jungle. And uh, who knows, we might use it in the jungle around here sometime. Get down deep into the woods with some big targets. They're easier for me to hit. <laughs> All right, so 
I'm not going to count those as misses because I, I'm pretty sure I hit them enough to move them a little bit. So uh, we won't waste 40 rounds trying to finish them off. I'll get the big one though. Got to get him. All right. I like to roll him. Now, I should quit while I'm ahead, but I'll see if I can put one on that red plate. <sighs> Swing him a little bit. I knew that was going under. I knew that was going under too. Got to get the side up on it. All right, I get hit by the knob there a little bit to watch it. <sighs> With my extender, you know, I get a little bit longer butt, and that's the main reason I have that on there. Just give me a little bit longer length of pull. It's a fairly short uh, firearm. And it's a lot more fun to shoot with, with uh, you know, that, that much uh, added to the stock. Uh, yeah, it absorbs some recoil, but that's not so much the issue. The 303 doesn't kick that much. It's uh, that added length I need. Okay. Let me try him another time or two. I'd hate to have to give up on him. Ah, all right. <laughs> now that earned me a shot on the big plate up there. Big air plate. All right, cool. And that earned me the right to take these guys out right here. I have three shots left and uh, we're gonna really test these sights and see if they're on here, okay? We'll take this guy out here first. And this one. <laughs> okay, we got a hang up. You know how these automatics are. <laughs> oh nice, he put on a show for us, didn't he? Oh boy. Pretty cool. I think oh, I even had a couple of rounds left. So, uh, oh man, I love getting these things out again. And uh, sorry to be so slow in getting those targets down. I know you probably had places you needed to be, but where I needed to be was right here and uh, practicing with this thing. Because uh, I have determined that I think the sights are on. I believe in the first video, I was uh, thinking it was going left. Now I'm thinking that was just me because I've not messed with the sights. Uh, it, I think it shoots pretty much right on, and uh, that's always nice. It builds confidence. But this is a handy little rifle. This is my scout gun, really, uh, when you get right down to it. So I'm looking forward to getting it broken in. Uh, the gun's really not even broken in. Uh, it's just that simple. But to have a, a historical piece like this that is uh, just like new, like new condition is it, pretty cool. The bluing is not off, uh, you know, in so many places. It's just uh, like you went and picked it up at the shop. So uh, it's, you know me, I like firearms that have actually been used. Uh, in battle is, is interesting, isn't it? To have a firearm that was actually used, uh, like the Garand we have in different firearms. It's also kind of neat to have, a, you know, a, one of these from 1946 that is just like... Uh, you know, you picked it up at the at the shop, brand new. That's kind of interesting too, though. I'll have to say. So anyway, the old number uh, five Mark One F, made in 1246. Uh, it's a keeper. Life is good. <laughs>